That process that you've just seen applies to every single shaft that's manufactured. That's not a sampling process. So every shaft that's manufactured goes through that process of, uh, of check and testing. Um, and each piece, each individual um, piece that goes to build a helicopter, and there are 20,000 of them, there are 20,000 parts that go to build a helicopter, each one of them has a lifetime track and trace process. So we know at any time who made a particular part on a helicopter. We know who the inspector was that inspected the part. We know where it was made and when it was made. Um, and we know where it was repaired, um, if it was repaired. And we know that for the entire lifetime of the helicopter for each one of the parts. So there is a very sophisticated management of all part numbers on helicopters and that's imposed on us by the, the aviation authorities um, in order that we are able to go back to the source of a problem uh, when a problem occurs. This is a picture of the first shaft that cracked uh, after, the, uh, after the first um, event uh, in May. Um, it, the crack occurred close to the weld between the shaft and the bevel gear um, and it its origin was in a small hole which exists at the end of the weld in Eurocopter's electron beam welding process. At the end of the weld, in order to ensure the integrity of the weld, we drill a hole into the weld because we know the stress um, calculation. We can calculate what the stress is around the hole. So it's a uh, defined uh, and known um, uh, measurement. Um, and the crack occurred around the, uh, the origin of the first crack was around the hole. This particular shaft was young. It had only flown 167 hours um, and it had been subject to a change in the manufacturing process. The hole has a, a chamfer um, at each end and we had changed the angle of the chamfer in a manufacturing process earlier in the year. And for those reasons. It was a new shaft, a change of manufacturing close to the hole. The root cause analysis led us to conclude that this was a manufacturing batch problem, that we had changed the manufacturing process, that the manufacturing of the hole and the chamfer were uh, key factors um, in the, the root cause of this crack. And as a consequence of which, we uh, we, we together with the safety authorities, this is the aviation authorities, applied measures, safety measures, to all the shafts that were produced in the same batch. Uh, those safety measures in particular included monitoring uh, the vibration levels of um, the, the shafts, those particular helicopters and those particular shafts that have been uh, manufactured in the same batch. Had those monitoring, had that monitoring existed prior to the, the ditching, um, the ditching would not have occurred. Um, uh, that's, and that's the nature of a safety measure. Uh, the idea is to put in place a preventative action which ensures that you will not have a reoccurrence. Um, and by its nature, if it had existed in the first place, then um, the ditching would not have occurred. However, um, they were applied, those safety measures were applied to a batch of shafts and not to the entire population. And um, unfortunately, we had a second incident in October. And the second incident occurred in a very similar, not identical uh, position um, on a different shaft that was not in the first batch. Um, this particular shaft, the second on the second event, um, had more than 3,000 flight hours um, and had been manufactured um, some time before the first one and some time before the manufacturing process um, had been changed. Um, so it was clear that the problem was not limited to a batch. The immediate reaction of Eurocopter was to mandate the application of the safety measures which had previously been imposed on the batch to all of the fleet uh, of the 225 and that happened within um, a few hours of us understanding that the safety measures that we had implemented were, were too limited in terms of the, uh, the applicability of those measures. Um, so they were immediately expanded and, and additional measures were introduced, a reduction in the monitoring time of the vibration system to three hourly uh, cycles so that we would immediately 
um, spot uh, if there was a, um, a pending, uh, a reoccurrence uh, in another machine, and that machine would be grounded before it would have chance to fly. Um, uh, we also applied a measures reducing the power um, uh, on which the uh, power that is applied to the gearbox in order to reduce the uh, potential uh, for a further crack or any crack occurring on any other part of the uh, on any other helicopter in the fleet, and we enlarged the test. Uh, the test and investigation series as a result of having this second occurrence which gave us uh, much more information. And Gilles will tell you after the coffee break a little bit about those, or not a little, quite a lot about those investigations and where we are. We, since then we have broken on the test bench, we have forcibly broken several shafts uh, in order to, to replicate the, the propagation and to look at the life of the crack so that we can confirm that the safety measures that we have in place uh, are indeed right and that we can understand better the, the lifetime, the profile uh, of the crack uh, and its development. We've also um, asked operators to check their aircraft through non-destructive testing, um, eddy current process with a, an eddy current specialist. Um, I have checked a large number of the aircraft um, so far, we're close to 60 aircraft that have now been checked. 60 of those that are on the ground have now been checked. There are no, uh, no reports, no, no uh, events, no cracks in any of the 60 aircraft that have so far been checked. Um, they've been subject to very special um, eddy current check. Of course, that means the gearboxes have been opened, the oil has been drained out, the shaft has been examined uh, with, a, with a special eddy current um, equipment. Uh, and indeed, we have trained all of the eddy current inspectors. Um, uh, we have given them specialist training. We've trained uh, more than 100 eddy current inspectors around the world, and those, it's those inspectors that have performed those inspections. So I'm pleased to say that on the 60 or so aircraft that have been inspected, there, have, there are no um, uh, recurrences of cracks on the shafts to date. Just one or two words about the emergency lubrication system, uh, because it was the second problem that, that uh, came apparent. Uh, it's a bit of a complicated chart, and I apologise. It's, it's, uh, the system, it, it, as I described it, takes air out of the left-hand engine and mixes it with glycol um, and injects the glycol onto, through injectors uh, onto the gears in order to, to cool the gears. Um, in, in both cases, the system works. In both of the events, and the system worked, but unfortunately uh, it was subject to a false warning. Um, we've now finished the root cause analysis. We have determined uh, the root cause of those problems and the fixes you will hear from Gilles. Gilles um, the fixes are in place and will be implemented during the month of February and March. Um, a word about HUMS. A HUMS system is a system fitted, mandated by the authorities to all large transport helicopters. Um, it consists of a series of vibration sensors which monitor the vibration of all of the dynamic, the turning components, um, the gearboxes, the main gearbox, the intermediate gearbox, the tail gearbox, uh, as well as other systems on the helicopter. It, the, the sensors monitor vibration and by monitoring the vibration, they can detect any abnormality in the vibration levels. Um, and that data is downloaded to an onboard computer. Um, and according to a pe pe periodicity, the, uh, the, the card can be taken out of the computer. Uh, when the aircraft is back at a maintenance base, it is downloaded by the maintenance engineers and the operators. And they are able to, um, they are able to look at the vibration levels um, of the HUM system and determine whether there are any abnormalities and that is one of the um, additional safety measures which has been implemented since these two events is a much uh, more period, uh, regular monitoring of that system um, in order to, to look at those vibration levels. Um, so that's the, just a word about the HUM system um, so that when Gilles talks after coffee you'll have an idea of, uh, of uh, what he's talking about. Last, uh, last word on the safety advisor's visit, I think actually uh, uh, Alan has said it all. Um, it's very much our desire that, uh, that representatives from the industry feel um, 
that Eurocopter is being transparent and open, reliable, uh, honest in our communications. Um, this is an issue which affects all of us um, and this is an issue which we perfectly understand um, is important, requires a full and transparent communication. The, the visit last week was designed to, to, to take, you, take us in that direction. There, are, there will be other visits um, so that others can come down to Marignan, um, see what we're doing, um, meet with the engineers, um, challenge the engineers, give us your ideas, if, your questions. Um, that's, the, uh, that's our desire. It's our desire that we work together on this issue with our customers, with you, the safety advisors. Um, the uh, target is to, is to find the fix. Is the target is to find the root cause of the problem and to ensure that these aircraft are safe to go back to flight. And in every case, to ensure that you and colleagues and pilots and passengers and families of all of you are confident that the 225 is safe um, and that it should return to service. That's it. Thank you very much. Um, I, uh, yeah, I think I'm on time. Um, just a last word. I think I mentioned, Jill, you'll mention uh, independent validation from, the, from, the, yeah, from Georgia Tech. So that, that's where we are today. Um, I hope that helps for those of you who are not completely familiar with the aircraft or with the events. Um, a short briefing. I'll be happy to take questions uh, during the Q&A session. And um, in that case, uh, Les, back to you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Derek.